Good morning. The United States is undergoing a major factory construction boom, and it's going to be a serious problem for us and is going to be a big opportunity for China. Let's go through why, and it's not hard to imagine how this is going to play out over time. Here is what the Biden administration officials are boasting of. Giant new investments in factory construction up over three times since 2019, with hundreds of thousands of factory jobs that are coming once these factories are built. That's from Axios. This is Bloomberg. Factory investments have soared, with most of the spending tied to facilities for computers, electronics, and electrical production. The majority of these are in two industries, electric vehicles and batteries, and in semiconductors. The plan is to build out the electrification of our transportation systems. That's electric cars and buses. That's going to mean a lot of batteries, and that's the problem we've got. The batteries need graphite, and we don't have any. China's got a monopoly on the refined graphite, which is necessary for making all these batteries. Here is the analysis on those points. Our new electric vehicle battery and assembly plants are aimed at taking the industry away from China. But that doesn't happen without graphite. Steel making, semiconductors, EV batteries. You cannot build a lithium ion battery without graphite. And that means there are no electric vehicles without graphite. The battery belt, that's the big network of factories that we have under construction. All of them need synthetic graphite, natural graphite, and anodes. Those are the terminals. And all of those come from China. And if we want to make those things ourselves, it's going to cost a lot more. And that means the electric vehicles that all these factories are going to be building are not going to be competitive against regular internal combustion engine cars. Last year, Beijing imposed export controls, very strict export controls on the shipments of Chinese graphite. November to December, graphite shipments plunged 91%. China says they put on those export bans in response to trade barriers and tariffs that were put in place against their factory sector. And it came right after new announcements from the United States to ban the sale of advanced semiconductors to China. We've put ourselves in this position by building factories before solving the supply chain's problems, and now we're kind of stuck. This graph is from the Institute for Supply Management, and it's a gauge of manufacturing activity and production. So on the right side, we're looking for the number 50, because any reading here over 50 shows expansion, and any reading below 50 shows contraction. We have not been over 50 since September 2022. We're building lots of factories, but the factories are producing less than before. When manufacturers keep getting readings below 50, they don't want to build more factories because they're not making use of the factory capacity they've got now. So now we're slowing these projects down. Construction timelines are getting more vague, being pushed back later into the future. U.S. subsidies are slowing down, labor shortages, rising costs, interest rates are going up, markets aren't working. Taiwan Semiconductor is slowing down their big $40 billion plant in Arizona. Intel is dragging their feet on another $20 billion project in Ohio. Ford, GM, and Tesla are scrapping plans to expand for now. Rivian Automotive stopped construction on their big $5 billion project in Atlanta. And here's why. If you want to build a battery factory, you have to think about where the raw materials are going to come from. If you want to build an engine for a plane, we need parts for that. General Electric is supposed to get those to Boeing, but 80% of their supply problems come from external factors, manufacturers, materials, and supply chain problems outside their company. You're going to hear this on our channel every single day. China owns the supply chains for basically everything. It doesn't matter if you're Boeing or Tesla or Toys R Us. They're either building the products for you, or they're mining and refining the raw materials and sending it to you so you can build it in your own shops. That's the story. This is the biggest story in global industry, and nobody's paying attention to it. We're building factories all over the country to make batteries, and nobody asked where we're going to get the graphite. Why didn't they know? So let's go find some graphite.
and let's be quick about it. Graphite One is a U.S. company that hopes to solve the graphite problem. This is from their company website and press releases. The United States is 100% import dependent for graphite, and Graphite One is developing a U.S.-based supply chain. They have a large graphite deposit in Ohio, and they hope it will be vertically integrated operation from beginning to end. The mining, processing, and anode manufacturing for electric vehicle batteries. They've also identified reserves 60 kilometers north of Nome, Alaska, and they're doing a feasibility study there to see if they can make that go. They signed a non-binding agreement with Lucid, and they're on the path to produce revenue in 2027. And that's just the beginning. 2027 is three years away, so we're looking at best case, graphite coming into our supply chains three years from now. Begs the question then, where are we going to get the graphite until then? Are we going to wait? Are all these factories we're building going to sit empty and unused until Graphite One figures out how to produce and refine graphite in Ohio and whether it's worth building another big facility at the Arctic Circle? 60 kilometers north of Nome is right on the Arctic Circle, and we should assume that their feasibility study is trying to figure out how they can get that engineered and staffed and build out logistics because the alternative is continuing to buy from China. So this is a chicken and the egg problem, and it's a good question why we're building all these factories if we haven't nailed down yet where the raw materials are going to be coming from. China has monopolies on the graphite used for electric vehicles and batteries, which we hope all these factories here are going to be building. China mines two-thirds of all the world's graphite, controls 60% of the synthetic graphite, and basically all, 100% of the coated spherical graphite we need to make the batteries. China builds 98% of all the anodes, the negative battery terminals. So let's put ourselves in China's position and try to imagine what we would do were we in such a position. What would be a good strategy here, given their monopolistic control over the technology and the raw materials that will be needed by all these factories here? China knows all of this, of course. They can look at a map of Alaska, too. They can look at the calendar and see how far away 2027 is which is the earliest date we're going to be producing any graphite on our own. And it's not hard to guess what their strategy is going to be. If we want graphite for our electric cars, or if we want airplane engine parts so Boeing can build aircraft again, the tariff and semiconductor bans go away. That's going to be the start of their negotiations for the graphite. This is near Hulunbear, the grasslands of Inner Mongolia. Be good. Thank you for helping me.